So, if you buy a Skyline or get something imported in, what you're going to run into is you're going to run into your radio not working. If you live in the United States, you end up with no channels. You might end up with like one. I think I have like one. It's like 83 or something like that or 89. But uh, yeah, you have no channels at all. So, new radio today. I'm uh, going to get rid of this uh, cigarette lighter adapter for my... Uh, dash cam slash mirror monitor backup camera thing. I uh, bought new speakers for the front, new radio, and I have some old six and a halfs for the back. So I got some old Fosgates just hanging out here. I'm gonna use those in the back, six and a halfs. And here's a new radio, uh, radio harness. Uh, usually you need an antenna adapter uh, for the antenna, and I should have it. Uh, because this thing had a CD changer in it, I ripped that out when I put the mirror in. Yeah, but anyways, I went with one of these Nakamichi radios. I've actually never ever installed one of these in my life. I used to be a car stereo guy, so. Um, and then I got some super cheap Pioneer 4x6 for the front. So I'm not um, really uh, doing a whole sound system upgrade. That's not the plan with this. The plan is to just replace and make it work. This, this thing was super cheap. It was 50 bucks. And it doesn't have a CD player in it, which I don't even play CDs anymore. I just want the Bluetooth, and it's a Bluetooth radio. And um, it only has like one pre-out. And uh, anyways, I want to be able to do the hands-free calling and hook it up to my phone, and that's what this is going to do, hopefully. So we'll find out how good this is for 50 bucks. And these guys here are like $30. They're not going to get anything terrific out of this. Just pretty much replace it, make it work. And uh, this is a cigarette lighter adapter, a cigarette lighter hardwire kit. I'm gonna wire this into uh, the radio harness too, and that's gonna be part of. See what else I got? Um, I'm gonna wire in some other wiring, some extra wiring behind the radio, some power wiring for future gauges, and uh, it'll be wired up to a radio harness. That's. Uh, yeah, we'll get started on that. Hey, if you have a Volkswagen, this looks like this will plug right into a Volkswagen. Let's see. This is a Volkswagen. This is a Volkswagen harness. <laughs> Check this out. It's like super small and lightweight. It's like super small. It doesn't weigh anything. Look. <laughs> Look at that. Oh, okay. Dual pre outs. Microphone. Antenna. Super, super simple, super basic. Little big ass knob. I'm gonna wire this to this. Now I'm pretty sure that, from what I can remember, the Nissan doesn't have a ground. Yeah, no ground, so I'm gonna wire up a ground. And I'm gonna use some of the spare wiring I had laying around. Got this nice braided stuff on here, use this as my ground. And wire this up to the black one. All right, here is my cigarette lighter. I'm gonna wire up. This is going to be behind, hiding behind the dash where I can get to it from the center console. So I want to add this for what I'm going to add later if I want to add some uh, USBs or anything like that. Um, I have this behind the dash. Kind of hidden away. It's pretty cool. It's pretty nice. Uh, it comes with a fuse holder. 15 amp fuse already in there. It's got these terminals on it which is nice if you're going to hook it up to something. But I'm going to cut those off. Got some more of this cool cabling. It's gonna be for gauges later on. I'm gonna wire this in too. Have this really nice nylon stuff on it.
We use the 3M stuff because it doesn't get gooey when it gets hot. Just take it. Let's do some wraps. It's wrapped super tight. And when you do this, when you wrap the wires up, you want to make sure you don't have any pokes, like none of the wires pokey. That way it doesn't go through the tape. And this will be just fine. Alright, so this is Tessa tape. This will really improve the way your wiring jobs will come out. Um, it's kind of like a felt tape. Mercedes and BMW use this. Mostly Mercedes use this. Audi uses it too. It's a wrap around their wires. It quiets the wires and it looks really, really nice. So if you're building harnesses, you really want to use this stuff. Alright, so here's my finished harness. Here's the Nissan harness here. Okay, test the tape nice and neat. Um, anti rattle. Got a fuse for my cigarette lighter adapter cable. Here's my ground because the cable itself or the car doesn't pr provide a ground. And here's my cabling for uh, future accessories like gauges and things like that. So, this is a nice clean harness. Okay, and the test the tape does a great job of making it look uh, look pretty nice and this nylon wrap stuff is pretty neat too so we'll get the radio out of the, the uh, skyline and then uh, hook this guy up so let's pull the cigarette holder out there's two Phillips screws pull the bezel in Careful with this junk. So this is a nice shift knob, but I honestly don't like it. It doesn't fit well in my hand. It's like it feels so small. Alright, so here's a little tip. Having uh, one of these little pocket screwdrivers, these things are game changers. These things are uh, lifesavers. Especially the ones that have a little magnetic tip. Because you find yourself doing that all the time. Instead of dropping your screws everywhere. So it makes things a lot easier, especially stuff like this. Especially if your screwdrivers aren't magnetic. Huh. Uh, I already have the adapter from the CD changer. So I'll go ahead and show you. This is what the plug looks like. Okay, and this is what it looks like going into your radio. So you need an adapter to go from this to this. This is already in here. Here's a little tip, if your radio, if you can't get these screws to loosen because they're so tight and you start stripping them, if you stick your Phillips in here and you get a hammer and hit it real hard a couple times, okay, and then put a lot of pressure on it, then turn it, they can snap loose, okay? That's a little tip with that, if it starts to strip. These guys, these guys are pretty loose, so. All right, so I got it to fit a little bit better. Check it out. It's not poking out super bad. Anyways, it's gonna go something like that. But it fits in there pretty good. And what I did, it's a little on the ghetto side, but you know, do what you gotta do. Make it work. And really, it's just um, <laughs> electrical tape. 
some cardboard back here because there's no holes that really line up. Now the radio is so light because it doesn't have a CD player in it that um, I really don't think it's going to move around too much. And if it does, it's not really going to go anywhere. But in the future, I'm planning on replacing this pocket with a, a gauge plate anyway, so it's going to come all out and it's going to get uh, replaced anyway. So this is going to work for now. Isn't really the uh, I guess textbook way of installing a radio, but believe it or not, in your car stereo shops, this is this type of stuff is done all the time. I mean, there's glue, there's tape, cardboard, there's all kinds of stuff going on that you have no idea that's you know behind your radio or behind your door panel. But this is how it's gonna go in for now because it looks better. I mean, if I wanted to, I could really like I could glue it or I could actually get brave and drill holes into the radio, but I'm not gonna do any of that. Grab my harness. And plug her in. Alright. This is my extra. Extra, extra. And here's my cigarette letter. this guy down that way here's my ground and what I'm gonna do with the ground is I can just ground it like this to the radio when I put it in on that bracket um, got a lot of options that I can do I can go like this like this I'll probably go right here because this is gonna ground to that bracket there See if this bad boy works. <sighs> hey, it works. It sounds really crappy with the speakers that are there now. But uh, yeah, lots of speakers now. deck speaker is gonna have to take the back seat out of the back part and the cushion here they got to come out and then you can get the deck out I'm, I'm hoping that I don't have to mess with this I really don't know it's been a while since I tried to take in a back seat out of a 90s car uh, most of your new cars now um, there's usually like a little button you can feel here that you can move back and forth and then you can lift the seat up what I remember kind of remember from playing with some old ass Ultimas and Sentras you just yank like hell and they'll pop up you just got to kind of find where the clip is and make sure you pull on that and not on the edge of the seat because then you'll bend the seat cushion and it'll be all screwed up looking so this one i don't think has ever been taken out it's gonna be a pain in the ass probably so get the gopro mounted up Let's see if i can just yank this Push down in there. Here, push down, pull this way. Whew. It's been a while since I've done that. Oh, that one's that one's pretty easy. That side is a lot harder. Once you get that side, it'll just pop right up. No big deal. And then so we got here. Our future on the road. Dang, look at that. You 
Japanese too. Anyways, this right here, this is 10 millimeter here, 10 millimeter on the other side. I'll just lift up and come right out, hopefully. This is from back seat here are these guys here they're just like these pressure pins that are there's one on the front one on the back you just hold that thing in so you just gonna just pow pop it up real fast if you just try to pull it all slow here on one side or one side and it's not gonna happen you know you gotta have to like kind of like breaking boards just break it okay commit to it that's kind of crazy but that's how the, some of this car stuff works go get me a, a panel tool and just pop this guy up should be pressure clips holding that all together. take apart. All you're gonna need is a Phillips, basically a little flathead screwdriver. The trickiest part about all this is this bezel right here. Flathead screwdriver, stick it in the corner. Actually this one's too small. Fuck. Alright, so the speakers in the front. You don't want to take this grill off like this or you'll you're pretty much breaking it. Um, Phillips, Phillips, some Phillips down here at the bottom. This is the trickiest part. This is trim bezel right here. Flathead screwdriver. And right where the, the hinge is at, you're gonna want to put it in and kind of pry it up. There's a little clip here, a little clip here. I'll show you what it looks like. here and there's a clip at the bottom so when you stick the screwdriver in here try to stick it like right here you're, you're actually trying to pop that loose here pop that loose here I hope that makes any sense so there's two clips here you'll be able to just pull it right off like I did this is the trickiest part this is the easiest thing to break on the door panel too I saw Wendy's where y'all from well, I was like to start over here Pick this up. Yeah. There's the factory 4x6 speaker. Look how blown out this thing is. Phillips screws, no problem. Easy peasy. Brownstone buildings with the kids on the porch. Murals on the walls for the ones that we lost. 
bodegas on the corner, let me see what's in store. Subway stations with the maps in the cars. Summer cookouts, uncle got the sandals on. Statue of Liberty, we holding up the torch. If they right. ask where I'm from, Cheap tell ass. them this is your speakers. From the home of the Not expecting these guys to sound badass or anything. But, you know, I just need them to play some sound. Watch your steps, cause these blocks meet Sometimes with these speaker harnesses, the polarities. Sometimes with the speaker, these quick speaker harnesses, the polarities aren't right. You can double verify it with uh, this old factory speaker here. It actually has a negative and a positive here. So I need to actually switch the pins around on this guy. Buildings with the kids on the porch, murals on the walls for the ones that we lost. The bodegas on the corner, let me see. Right, got the radio in. Let's check this thing out. Got the radio, speakers, auxiliary in, Bluetooth. All right, hope you can see that. Bluetooth, no pair. I'm gonna pair them to my phone right real quick. Nakamichi. Okay, let's see if it's, it's paired up. All right, let's find some tunes. Hooks up Bluetooth uh, up to my phone, no problem. Uh, it's really simple. The functions are just like super crazy easy. Um, just insane how easy, which is right up right up my alley because uh, I'm not trying to have you know a Pioneer Radio has so many functions that I just it just you can get really detailed with a Pioneer Radio, Alpine Radio on system building. That's not what I wanted this thing for. I wanted it just to be real simple, clean, easy to use, and that's basically what this thing is. Okay. The only thing is, it doesn't have an external microphone, which I have to buy, which I probably have one of those laying around for my old Pioneer radio or Kenwood radio, okay? Just for the uh, hands-free uh, Bluetooth calling. That's it. All right, guys, well, I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, do me a favor, hit the thumbs up button, and subscribe if you want to see more on, uh, you know, me messing around with R32, and go check out the channel. You guys take care, be safe. Have a great weekend.